Good morning, everyone, and thank you to all my friends and coworkers and everybody for supporting me. It's just thank you. So I'm Ingrid Rolves, and this is my baptism testimony. I grew up in a loving home on a 10-acre chicken farm in Surrey with hard-working parents and grandparents who were believers, even though for the most part we didn't attend any church. I have three sisters. Okay. I have three sisters, one who lives in Kelowna, a, an adopted sister who lives in Penticton, and my sister Evelyn, who passed away when she was only 12 years old. My mom always said that I was an easy child when growing up. I managed to stay out of trouble because my entire childhood focused on horses and my friends who rode horses with me. But when I was only seven years old, I witnessed something traumatic that set, my, that set into motion a chain of life-changing events. My 12-year-old sister, Evelyn, was killed when she was kicked by a horse. Even though I was very young, I could see that Evelyn was going to die and the next morning, when I saw my mom crying in the living room, she, she told me that Evelyn was playing with the angels in heaven. My parents had a terrible time after that, especially my mom. Afterwards, um, sorry. Afterwards, uh, my parents started to take us to church, but... We soon stopped afterwards because my dad said that the church always wanted our money and my parents were both offended by something that the pastor had said about Evelyn's passing. One of the ways that my parents handled Evelyn's death was to adopt another daughter. They adopted Heidi and I'm so proud to say that her son Stephen is here today and I love you so much. My work as an LPN has always been very important to me. I actually didn't start nursing until I was in my 30s because I was afraid of death and dealing with death, especially after witnessing what I had witnessed. But then I became an LPN and I focused on, of all things, palliative care. I prided myself I prided myself and my work, and my mom always introduced me as the nurse in the family. But today I realize that I put too much emphasis on my work, and I let my job define me, and in some ways consume me. I knew that something was missing in my life, so I began searching, reading the Bible and attending various churches throughout the Lower Mainland. My good friend Jan Kurth, introduced me here to Home Church Langley a few years ago. And it's here that I attended the Alpha course and met some really amazing people, especially you, Kobe. You're my rock. I love you so much. Um, it's here that I really feel the great desire to grow as a Christian in our church and also in the community. My testimony today is that knowing God and knowing his son, Jesus Christ, is more important than my work. My job is not who I am. First and foremost, I am a child of God. Not long ago, I had no personal relationship with Jesus, but my newfound faith in him is more important to me than anything else. I don't just want to be baptized. I need to be baptized. I started down this path a couple of years ago and I allowed myself to get sidetracked, but I'm following through today. I took the foundations course with Pastor Jim and I learned a lot about who God is and his wonderful plan of salvation. From the day that I met Jesus, I knew that he has loved me the, this whole time and that I belong to him. Like he explained to Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, and I'm going to read John 3:16 to 21. It's my favorite part of the Bible. So, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whosoever lives by the truth comes into the light. Because of Jesus, I am now in the light, and I want to follow him the rest of my life. So in November of 2012, my mom's health started to fail, and she started to spiral down. And I started to spiral down emotionally as I anticipated her death. My mom and I were extremely close. I phoned her every day at 8.30 in the morning, and to this very day when I see 8.30 a.m. approaching, I think of her. And I was given a great gift that I was with her when she died. Others were just moments away from getting there, but she chose to die with me by her side. It's been a diff difficult couple of years since then, and I've been wrestling with severe depression as well as some other problems and um, post-traumatic stress from my sister's death. Our family wasn't very good about talking about her death, so the long and short of it is that my heart hasn't just hasn't been in my work the way it was before, and I'm currently on a medical leave, and it's a time of transition at work. I am praying for the Lord to both heal me and guide me, and I ask you all to pray for me too. I know that God will hear our prayers. So, my story is not over, and a time of transition is here. But I know that the best thing I can do right now is to follow Jesus and be baptized in his name. Thank you. Before God, our Heavenly Father, and before his family, the church, I ask you, Ingrid, to answer sincerely these three questions. Do you accept the good news of God's grace as it is in Jesus Christ, revealed in the Holy Scriptures as the only way to eternal life? Do you acknowledge that you are sinful by nature, but by the grace of God in Christ, your sins are forgiven, your slate is clean, and you are now living in a new land, a land of grace, mercy, and peace with God and love for all mankind? Do you promise to take full advantage of the means of grace, namely the Word of God, the Spirit of God, Christian fellowship, prayer, generosity, ministry, small groups, all the spiritual disciplines so that you might continually grow and mature as a, in your new life as a member of the body of Christ. Yes, truly with all my heart. Amen. Amen. And it is with great, great joy, Lord, that it was your plan that you be part of Home Church Life and get baptized here in the presence of these friends and witnesses and brothers and sisters. So Ingrid, now, considering all that God has done for you, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.